Today's guest is Dr. Lana Morrow, PhD. She's an award-winning functional medicine neuroscientist, founder, CEO, and creator of Think System. And she's an expert in dopamine, executive functions, and neurotechnology. Um, she's worked with diplomats, actors, European royalty, Fortune 500 CEOs, and Manhattan, Paris, and Rome. Uh, she's Italian herself, so you'll hear a little accent there. Uh, one thing that I love about Dr. Morrow is that she is constantly, even though she has such an accoladed history in neuroscience and neuropsychology, she's always talking about blending in spirituality and higher consciousness and um, our the quantum realm. She's really pushing into that. She has an absolutely incredible team of PhD scientists and researchers that she works with. Um, but I just, I love how she is always bringing in consciousness, 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 not just about, you know, she starts off, you'll hear, she's talking about our, how we've looked at everything from Newtonian physics for so long and how that's limited us, limited us. So man, she's just, she's really cutting edge. She's so forward thinking. She's just a bad A all around. She shares at the end, but, um, they just got approved for a study coming out in nature, which is a huge accomplishment. And also, um, she has been awarded the Galileo award. So, I mean, she's just such an accomplished, accomplished scientist, but also, um, she shares her background in studying shamanism and spirituality and all of that. So she's just so well-rounded in this space. So, um, yeah, I'll go ahead and let her dive in. If you guys want to check out think systems, I'll tell you a little bit. Um, if you go to think interfaces, let me make sure I'm getting that right. I will check. I will put the sh uh, link in the show notes. Yeah. Think interfaces.com. You can find out more about what we're talking about and what that actually looks like. Um, they have like how it exactly, how it works exactly. It's actually, she's gamified, um, this system that will enhance your cognition and your focus and actually increase neuroplasticity. And she says even possibly neurogenesis, which is so cool. Like creating new neurons in your brain, new neural pathways in your brain, very cool stuff. She came highly recommended, uh, through a friend through John Laurence, Dr. John Laurence, who was also on the show, uh, through Luke story, who said that this absolutely changed his mental performance. So we'll link all that up and we'll go ahead and get into the show. Here is Dr. Lana Morrow. Okay. So man, I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm breathing and I'm tapping in. Cause I'm like, there's part of me. That's like a little kid. That's just like, Oh my gosh, I can't wait for you to tell all the things to my audience. But, um, actually I really want to start out. There was something you said on your interview with Luke story. Like you said so many things on that interview that like, I just had chills running up and down my body because you were saying things that I have been taught directly from source, like in very deep private moments. And you're, you were saying word for word things that I have like been taught deep lessons straight from source. I was like, Oh, uh, this woman has tapped in. <laughs> and one of the things that you said, you know, we're going to talk about the brain and mental performance and all of neurotransmitters and areas of the brain and all that stuff. But you said something that actually I was taught in ayahuasca. When I was in my ayahuasca journey, I started, my brain started going a million miles an hour. The first two, I did four nights in a row at a place in Costa Rica. Wow, that's a lot. <laughs> and the first two nights, it didn't kick in for me. And I was so frustrated because I, there's this big intuitively guided thing and miracle for me to be there and all this stuff. And I was like, seriously? So the third night comes and I'm starting, I can tell I'm getting pulled into a journey. And mm -hmm. I start playing in my head at the same time of being in it. I'm imagining that I'm telling all my friends the next day what's happening while I'm experiencing it. Right. And I heard this shh, and I literally felt like someone had put, I thought one of the workers had put their hand on my heart. Like it felt that real, like came on my heart. I felt this pressure in my heart. Like I, I got startled and I was like, Oh, like, excuse you. kind <laughs> of Like, Oh, hi. And there was no one there. And I was like, Oh my gosh, I'm really getting pulled in this journey. And I heard shh think here, think here. And I heard in your interview, when you were talking with Luke, you said that you talked about thinking with your heart. And that's where I want to start off. Cause I was like, just chills up and down my body. Why do you say that? I'm getting chills right now. Cool. Thank you for seeing me. Thank you for seeing this journey and sharing this journey. It's really wonderful that we can all kind of be present here now. Yeah. Be here now. Um, why? Because, you know, as a neuroscientist and, um, Kind of classically trained, um, you know, neuroscientists uh, in programs that, you know, are recognized medically. Um, we're all taught to be thinking about the brain, the brain which is limit limited actually in 3D space. So the brain as, a, as an organ 
you know, um, the way that medical school teaches you is, is, is a, you know, consisting of, of cells and neurotransmitters and it's limited to this 3D reality, you know, of um, uh, neurons, transmitters, um, everything is based on Newtonian physics. Um, Newtonian physics uh, teaches since, you know, Newton proposed these uh, regulations and laws in place a long time ago in the seven, late 1700s, uh, it, it's, it's very um, outgrown, I think, as, as a humanity, we have outgrown the Newtonian physics and we have entered full time into, into quantum realm. Uh, we're using our phones and our, our you know, fMRI machines and even our cars are propelled on, on more than just, uh, you know, based on Newtonian physics, they're propelled on, on um, other, um, based on, on um, at least in part in quantum mechanics. And so we need to embrace that also how, in, in how we see ourselves. I believe that that's so important. And I believe that it's kind of, that is coming back home to what Native Americans have taught, who, you know, what, what um, Himalayan teachers, uh, Vedic meditators teach, Vedic rishis and gurus teach. Um, it's, it's based in ancient knowledge and knowledge of, you know, people and ancient traditions from more than 7,000 years ago have always been based in, in quantum understanding not in this limited Newtonian physics. And those teach that you're limitless. We as human race are limitless. So talking about um, you know, understanding and, and feeling, uh, thinking only with the brain is limiting us because we, we can't really do much about it. You, know, you have to accept, accept then this three-dimensional reality, linearity of the thought and of the feelings. And in reality, our reality, we're actually operating in quantum. You know, you, you get premonitions, you get, if you're open to it, if you're more in tune, you understand a certain type of, you know, frequencies and feelings, um, just like we can't quantify, you know, a feeling of love through the brain, you, you can't really define what love is or what, uh, you know, certain type of, um, frequencies of, of higher intensity are, we can only perceive them through feeling them, through really experience. Yeah. Them. So I'll give you an example of, of, you know, how we live right now in, in 5D already. Um, if you make a phone call to London, let's say now, um, you, you're on your, maybe on FaceTime with somebody in London. And that's, you know, pretty much most of us reality you know, our reality is, is that we, we, tr we talk and you have podcasts with people around the globe. So we just give it for granted, get it, take it for granted that we are able to speak with our friends and colleagues in Australia, in London, and we do it in real time. And how is that possible if we're based on Newtonian physics? Uh, it isn't because we would have a lag of six hours, you mm -hmm. know, and yeah. you can't really be on the phone and, and wait for six hours with somebody to, to tell you, you know, another phrase. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't work. <laughs> Even you and I now, you, I'm in Central Zone, I'm in Austin, and you are on Pacific time, no? Uh, mountain. Mountain time. So we're, what, one hour difference? Yeah. Right. So we don't have to have one hour lag between our right. one sentence and another. No, that would be fun. <laughs> I would have so many podcast listeners. That'd be so fun to listen to. Come back in an hour to see what Lana said back. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So we're, we're actually time travelers all the time, which means that we are um, feeling with our photovoltaic body. We're, we're mm -hmm. embedded in this photovoltaic reality. Uh, which is quantum reality. And we're not limited to just thinking with the brain, which is, you know, mm -hmm. this 3D concept. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. we're actually constantly operating at the level of limitless human, you know, which is yeah. our DNA is our portal. We're, we're accessing so much more than mm -hmm. just, you know, what, what medicine or what, what knowledge of uh, science until now has been teaching us. And I think the faster we embrace that, the uh, easier it will be for the humanity. And uh, I think some of us are living in this 5D already, you know, and bliss and, and going forward, knowing that no matter what, if you release it to divine consciousness, 
which comes to the issue of trust then, you know, you, you can trust. If you trust that process, you yeah. know, we're all kind of being told, trust the process, trust the heart, trust the, your own being. But what does it really mean? It's, it's kind of easier to say than, than, than perform. Yeah. So, yeah, I always say, uh, people ask me that sometimes they're like, you're, you seem like you like hear your intuition a lot. And like, I don't know if I, I'm like, I promise you, you hear your intuition It's the, the only difference is when you actively start doing what it's telling you to do and you see how awesome your life starts to get. And you see how many amazing discoveries you start to make, you start yeah. to trust it. And even when it feels uncomfortable, there's this, there's this quote from it's like Sherlock Holmes TV show or something, but I love it. It says intuitions represent too many data points to be processed by the conscious mind. Oh, wow. Right. And it's, and I love that. And it's like, so I trust it so much and I act on it and my life just keeps getting more awesome. And really that's all there is to it. I think it's tapping into this field, like you're saying, and that's why, like, I don't miss my meditation time. Um, I think the more we, we actively start to tap in like that and listen and feel and hear those messages. Now it starts to come like to me all day long. And I'm sure you're in that same place. It's just these little, these little directions, nudges, you know, come, they start to come more and more if we're willing to be present enough and slow enough to listen. And I have to say, I love your analogy about like time travelers. Cause I, I have a couple of clients in Australia right now. And I say, when I say, when I have calls with them, I'm like, what's the future? Like it's tomorrow there. Tell me what tomorrow's like. But when you really think about it, it's the same moment. It is this, we are on the call in the same moment. It's not tomorrow. Well, <laughs> we're always yeah. here. Be here now. And, yeah. here. and if you are, because in this, I think, uh, well, this is just my, my humble thought, but I think that in my experience and, you know, learning from my teachers in meditation, I'm a Vedic meditator, devoted Vedic meditator mm. for around more than 20 years. Mm. Um, and, um, you know, serious Rishi, serious uh, Siddha, and I, I don't sway away from that part. Mm. Uh, what, what it enables you to do is it enables you to tap into your limitless capacities by writing on, on divinity consciousness. Yeah. So you're, you're giving divinity consciousness, you're, you're seeding your power, you're simply yes. uh, allowing yourself to tap into that level and you are, um, you're, you're imbued with, with knowledge and with the presence of the divine most of the time. Mm -hmm. And the more you trust that process, the more you relax into it, yeah. you, kind of, um, you fly with it, you, you go in the flow. And yeah. it's not very different from when you perform a musical instrument, let's say you're on a stage, and you're playing a guitar or you're playing drums mm. you're you're in a group you know and then you can't really not be there and think about what is the next beat or what is the next slide right. you, you just have to feel it and you know you you're with your heart there it's your yeah. heart opener and not mm. your brain opener it's yeah. you don't process through the brain what you're going to be talking about or singing about or you know if you have yeah. i don't know great people like um, Jimmy Page or, you know, Jimi Hendrix, when they were going on the stage and performing, what people were responding to is not the quality of their voice or quality of their virtuoso performance. That's all brainy. What people are resonating with is their heart. You know, mm -hmm. they're capable of grooving on those guitars or, you know, in, in their singing, mm -hmm. even though maybe they don't possess the extraordinary voice, they, they just, explode in this love in this moment of now mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. this is where i think ascension this is what ascension is about now that's just what i feel um i think it's we're, we're growing into the levels of uh, where we all feel that we can stay in that frequency of higher elevation and everything is possible mm -hmm. so we can travel there all right. Speaking of being in flow and flow state, you know, I mean, there's so much that we hear about this with, you know, I'm sure you read, uh, what is the book? Um, ceiling fire, ca catching, fire, oh. catching, fire, ceiling fire, you know, and we talk about flow state from a neurotransmitter standpoint, obviously you are like as expert as it gets on, you know, neurotransmitters, neurobiology, you know, neuroscience, neuropsychology, what is, I'm curious, what is your opinion of the brain? What is, what is, how do you see the human brain? What is the role of it? How okay. would you define that? Um, thank you for this, you know, curious question. I think it's yeah. really cool. Um, how do I view the brain? I don't view it in 3D. That's first and foremost. Mm. It's like maybe similar mm. to a CAT scan, 
you know, when, when you perform a CAT scan on a person or fMRI, it's even better because it's more functional. Um, it's, it's a real time ongoing process with, with people when you film them on, when you perform the fMRI, you take a scan. Um, you end up um, taking a real ongoing scan of the brain that is performing a task. So for example, in our experiments, what we do, um, we, we have, a, a, let's say a task of go, no go task. You know, you press a button every time you see certain letter on the screen and you release the button if certain other letter like letter X comes in. That's a classical example of like a, a, a Connor CPT test that we perform before and after uh, that will tell us to what degree a person inhibits the response. And that inhibition happens at the prefrontal levels of the lobes of the frontal lobes of the brain, which involve also dopaminergic pathways or mm -hmm. involve also regulation of nervous vagus and regulation of amygdala. So for example, an amygdala plays a big deal, big role in, um, in your, your uh, fear, in, in fight or flight reflex. So if we have, um, you know, bunch of stress hormones in us right now because we have experienced, you know, all sorts of difficulties in life, especially in this last two, two years, you know, uh, we're all kind of going through or we're going through um, a constant um, stress or constant, it's not even post-traumatic stress disorder, it's constant trauma, uh, especially if we're talking about children, you know, who, who have had now massive traumatic injuries. So what happens is that the first impetus to flee, you know, to, to just go for the flight um, and maybe not even fight, but just go avoid the, the problem. Children, you know, will go into this or everybody, every brain does that. You, you end up with reactivity and amygdala just floods the brain with amygdaloid response, which dysregulates in turn the nervous vagus, vagus nerve. And um, it, it kind of, dis, kind of this place is your left and right hemisphere mm -hmm. because nervous vagus is, is a bilateral nerve. So it, it goes into uh, both sides of the you know, brain and then both sides of the um, parasympathetic um, nervous system, which regulates breathing, regulates heartbeat, regulates intestine, intestinal paras uh, paracelsis, intestine, stomach, you know, uh, hormones in, in um, in the brain and in the body. So it impacts quite a bit, it impacts our entire being. Now, I personally prefer to think about us as a charged battery rather than as uh, just a limit, limited three-dimensional brain and functionality of the nervous system. Because if you just limit on you know, this three-dimensional Newtonian-based uh, process or processes, you, you limit your capacities. So if you are shifting that capacity of, of thought to you know, the way that fMRI works, for example, in real time, you're monitoring everything. Um, that's how I view us or the brain in, of course, you know, through years of knowledge and studies, um, one acquires a lot of kind of instantaneous understanding of what is really going on in the brain. And this is not just based on my studies, it's based on, on you know, millions of, of researchers studies that we just tracked it down and diligently uh, read these, part, these papers or patents or whatever we get the knowledge from. Um, you combine that, or personally, I combine that with then data points. And um, my brain has the capacity to, or my being has the capacity to retain that, but I don't stay just in that state. I receive the knowledge also from real-time downloads from divinity consciousness, so that the combination of the uh, experience, um, spirituality, and being um, open to this guidance, and how does that guidance come to almost all of us? It doesn't come in, in form of like real voices or real imagery. Sometimes yes, or you know, it, I happen to have that. You happen to have that. I think a lot of us do if we're open to that degree. But I think most of the stuff, most of the time, we just have an idea, you know, in our head. And this idea doesn't really happen to have a, necessarily a voice or a structure of a, you know, proper sentence. Or right. it's more exotic than that. It's more. Um, just like, oh, I just thought about something, mm -hmm. you know, and if you define the thought, how do you define the thought? 
you you define it by you know oh, something popped in my head you know here it is right. <laughs> here it right. goes again, you know it's really dynamic so it, this this dynamicism is very interesting to me and um, how do we play around with it and how do we playfully engage with all of that i think we're all um kind of if we stay in the playful aspects of our reality combined with you know divinity consciousness and beautiful joy of life um we end up producing much more in much shorter amount of time and again if you're in quantum time doesn't exist so you can actually shrink and stretch time play around with it and um be more in the um, in the kind of almost the perfect self like mm. literally not perfect perfection doesn't really exist but um you know you're open to to consciousness at large and um so this is how i view people i view them as, as photovoltaic battery you know mm. just essentially you look look into um into a soul into a human um and you you see sometimes i see colors around them sometimes but I, most of the time i just perceive vibration you know it's mm -hmm. really this beautiful and we as humans we're, we're geared to really be more in a vibration of higher frequencies of divinity because we're all I, I view us as all being divine mm -hmm. so if you go into that frequency of higher um, vibration higher frequency you know of, of um, respect love um, honor you know just elevating yeah. that enables you then to do so much more Oh yeah. You're reminding me of so many books and so, you know, I'm, I'm thinking biology, a belief, Dr. Bruce Lipton, I'm thinking uh, power versus force, Dr. David R. Hawkins um, talking about these, you know, enlightened energies. And that's, that's really, truly what you're saying right there. Like when you look at the scale of consciousness, if you guys haven't read Dr. Hawkins, I'm I know, you know, Dr. Hawkins yeah. work, but if yeah. you, you know, whenever I find myself in fear, apathy, anger, any of these lower vibrational energies, I'm like, ah, I have some work to do there. <laughs> I see. I am definitely not in alignment because when I'm in alignment, it is these higher vibrational energies of love, compassion, um, forget, you know, I can't remember all the enlightenment, I think is the highest. It's such a fascinating book, but that is, uh, you're putting words to something that I think so many of us who have, um, been intentionally tapping in to source energy is kind of what I call it. That's the best word I've been able to have for it is, and, and you're tapping in, there's so much more available to us. And I, that's what I'm hearing you say is like the way we're looking at our capacity, the way we're looking at our brains and like what we're capable of is so limited because it's, it's so much bigger than that. It's so, it's so much more outside of just this little blob of cells that are really close together that were vibrating really quickly. You know, <laughs> we have, so we have so much more available to us. I'm, I'm one, you know, I, I know probably not everybody listening to this has had that experience. Maybe what, what Lana's talking about here, you're like, what, you know? And so let's say you're, you're listening to this and you have a really poor inability to focus. You're like riddled with anxiety or depression or those highs and lows between anxiety and depression every single day. You're, you, you know, I always know when I'm teetering into fight or flight mode and I will do anything to get out of that. I will say no to everything. Cause I I've been there before and I know what it does. You, you do not create an awesome life out of fight or flight mode. And I just won't do it to myself. So if I feel myself thinking like, I just want to go lay in my bed, I'm like, Oh, you are in fight or flight mode. <laughs> I just want to fly to Fiji. Okay. Yes. You are in flight mode, you know? And so if you're, maybe you're having those kind of thoughts, like, I just don't want to show up to work tomorrow. I just want to get away from all of this. I can't freaking focus on anything. My mood sucks. Like life sucks, you know, all these kind of energy energies that someone's in. What would you say to somebody starting in that place? Like, mm -hmm. what do they need to know in order to get out of that place? Mm. I love when you post practical questions. I think it's so important for people to have like a know-how of dopa hack of, um, you know, under two minutes. So <laughs> it's, uh, you hack your dopamine, you know, nice. well, biohacker, neurohackers neuro yes. here. And um, you, you end up, um, you know, one of the first things that I usually do is I imagine just or go back into that feeling of hugging my child or hugging mm. my dog you know i don't have a dog right now but i i borrow luke's dog <laughs> <laughs> i love dogs too and i don't have one <laughs> um you know she's a love she's incredibly powerful um healer herself yeah. and um 
I think that, you know, if you have something that you really like or love, that you can shift into that mode of remembering how that feels. Um, uh, lack of that, you can you can pop in your best song, you know. If you have, a, yeah. I don't know, Pharrell Williams, happy. You can't sit still without bouncing around without yeah. uh, when you hear that song. I love that. I always say music is like hypnosis. It's it literally is. changing your energy, your frequency and vibration. It, it will hypnotize oh. you into a certain state. So I think it's one of the smartest biohacks out there. I know music was a music language. I was a big part of your early yeah. studies, right? And when you were young. Yeah. Said, um, my undergrad was in ethnomusicology and shamanism and linguistics. So um, I did study with some shamans and I did study with, you know, the circular repetition trance music. And um, that was my probably, you know, one of those things where through which I learned more about frequencies in wow. a very kind of a magical way. And, um, you know, we all respond to frequencies from very early stage. I mean, how do you suit the baby to sleep? You know, you, you rock them and you sing to them. Right. And it's a newborn, or if, even it's, you know, when you have it in your womb, you, you play them an instrument, you sing them, you sing to them, or you, you, you move around a little bit, dancing and swinging and yeah. using, your, you know, soothing voice or your soothing, um, you know, song. And I think that's, that's extremely powerful. And it's been powerful since that, that's been, we've been having access to that since the beginning of the, of the world, you know, or whatever that is. So, of this time space, you know? Let you me know? ask you this real quick, real quick side note on music. Cause I, this is something I've always thought like, so I use music as a, as a hack all the time. Oh, yeah. Like I've got it playing in my house when I'm cooking dinner with my kids, we, you know, we'll go from anything like super silly, like old school rap and just having fun and dancing around to like, you know, house music or EDM or whatever. And like, we're just having fun. I've always, I'm curious your thoughts since this is such a, was such a deep area of study for you. You know how like a lot of people will listen to like really sad music, like really sad and depressing and I miss you and my heart's broken and all that <laughs> stuff. What are your thoughts on that? <laughs> Cause I've always thought, I mean, I get it, but like, man, are you kind of like trancing yourself into like more sadness? I'm just curious if you have an opinion on that. And it's probably very similar to yours. I mean, yeah. I would, I would um, not invite people to, especially these days, we're having such a, you know, transitional time in, into this new world, new guy that we're creating. Um, and we're, we're just, a lot of people are, are being exposed to fear and yeah. we're being bombarded with, with a lot of, you know, frequencies and 5G frequencies, some other things. We just have to stay mindful of being yeah. in higher frequencies. That doesn't mean that everything has to be, you know, <laughs> Um, constant forced bliss. Yeah. Um, yeah. But you have to set up the stage for yeah. in your heart for yeah. for good good things to happen. Right. And it doesn't you know you can listen to a tone of like 432 hertz or some higher tones. They they will be beneficial tones, and they don't have to be aggressive or you know a huge uh, bumpy you know. Um, I don't know, rock and roll uh, yeah. type of beat, but they can be, you know, soothing um, 528 hertz. And yeah. that is just a tone, so a tone, but it can propel you just like singing balls, you know, the, the yeah. singing balls. They don't yeah. have to be necessarily, you know, having also the gong beat and the, the drums and everything. It, it can be also just one single tone and it elevates you. Mm. So I think whatever you can do to get to the point where something frequency wise elevates you a little bit higher, it is, it is nice and beneficial. And you will feel it. your body will thank you. Body keeps the score. You know, body is definitely uh, your parameter or yeah. your measure, your, your way of, of measuring uh, influences of, of other things. I mean, yeah. What came to mind right now is uh, just how we, how you enter the room. Now you enter the room, you're surrounded by own angels and you go in, okay, I'm in, you know, and you come yeah. into the room with your wings open and people yeah. are, you know, definitely yeah. attracted to your frequencies, but you enter your world as a stage and you enter your world with, with, with powerful hearts, with your open heart, with higher frequencies. Um, that will translate into being, you know, a magnet for good, good vibrations, good things. 
And that's nothing but a frequency of your own vibrational soul, you know, your, your own capacity to actually enjoy your, um, your higher, higher being. And that higher being is something I think we can be present with all the time. Yeah. I think I lost the train of thought of what you were saying. I just, I went on to this. You're just channeling, oh, channeling God, light and goodness. I just wanted to come through. And yeah. Like, Here we are. But I love it. You, you know what I mean? It's yeah, like, absolutely. It's just being. We all have in us yeah. that transmits and it goes in as a power of uh, beauty of the flow of yeah. the world and of yeah. the divine consciousness. And if you open yourself to that, you will create and you will perpetuate new things. So uh, new new modalities for these higher frequencies. Where were we? <laughs> well, we this is talking? this is what's coming to my mind. Like so much of because you know I do holistic health coaching, right? And we have such a myopic, like we want to just separate and, and look at everything through a pinhole. And as you're saying this, like so much, this is why I went into mindset coaching as a health coach. Cause I was like tired of pretending like I knew what we needed to get through with people when they're, you know, emotionally eating and hard on themselves and horrible self-talk and not exercising, not taking care of themselves, people pleasing like crazy. I can't leave my family or I'm selfish. All this stuff. I was like, okay, we got, we, we got to get real about this stuff. Like what happened? When did this start? Like, you know, what, let's, let's dig deeper into it. And as, as I've sent clients now more on the path of healing to other healers and other experts, and, and we're digging into their heart space and like, getting rid of all these old stories and helping heal from traumas and become more aware, their health just starts getting optimized. Right. And so when it comes to, you know, you're talking about such high vibrational concepts in accordance with the brain, you know, so often I think like, okay, let's say we have someone who is an adrenal fatigue because they're running themselves into the ground. Well, why are they running themselves into the ground? Why are, you know, they're having all these mental health issues and anxiety because they won't say no to anything. It's, it's, it's a lack of connectedness to the heart. Something happened somewhere. There was a trauma where it's, you need to prove your value or you need to prove that you're enough. So you're going to, people like, don't even realize I didn't, I mean, I definitely was in that space forever. And I didn't realize I was proving my value. I didn't realize I was running from fear that I wasn't enough and all these things until I started to heal. And then only then did my mind space start to become more calm and open and healed. And so I'm curious, you know, I definitely want to talk about think interfaces for sure, because <laughs> just to tell my audience, I'll probably put this in the intro, but Dr. John Laurent inter introduced us. And I was actually with John when Luke's story was texting him like crazy. <laughs> Luke wouldn't stop texting John about how amazing your system was for him. He's like, no man, it's life changing. You know, he's telling me. And so I definitely want to introduce our audience to that. But my question is like, for someone who, you know, feels like they have inattention, this is, I mean, this is probably the biggest thing, right? Like lack of attention. I'm always like, go meditate, <laughs> but lack of attention, but low you mood. If you have, you know, really strong ADHD or you have, right. Reading, it's very hard to ask, um, you know, right. a child or a person to sit down and meditate. That's what I was going to ask you. So like where, you know, for, for when you're starting out, when you're in that place, you're depressed or you're super anxious or, you know, and I do think there's some healing that needs to be done there in the deeper levels, but mm -hmm. you know, um, I'm curious why you decided, well, let's go ahead and go into think interfaces, which I hopefully, can you explain what the, the game is and how it works Absolutely. and like, what, do, why did you create that as a path for, for people to be able to raise dopamine? And actually, sorry, I'm going to double whammy this question. First of all, I, some people may not know how, uh, dopamine impacts your personality and how you feel. So if you could explain how dopamine Absolutely. impacts, how you feel, and then why you decided to take this route to help people have more balanced levels in their brain and start feeling better. Because it's a shortcut. Uh, it's Yay! A very, it's a shortcut. You know, it's like dopamine hacks are, are um, enabling us to really get into the state of mind um, in where we would get over maybe you know five years of meditation or um, where you go with sports. You know, like Olympic athletes getting to dopamine overdrive when, which is a positive one. No. Um, right. We get there when, when we train a lot, you know, yeah. for triathlon, you're with a coach, 
you know, you, you do you do treadmills, you do the, um, you know, I don't know, I do rock climbing, I do, you know, kickboxing, stuff like that, that gets you in the groove so that you can actually lift weights. Um, yeah. aerobic, aerobic, you know that very well. Um, yeah. That all happens because, um, because we, we are driven to actually feel good. And dopamine is a feel good hormone. And it's a reward hormone. So um, it also taps into nucleus accumbens, it taps into substantia nigra, which are all these dopaminergic prefrontal area um, pathways. And they they make you, you know, sincerely dopamine in your brain. And you, if you are able to stay in this dopaminergic loop and dopaminergic flow, you're literally in a state of flow and you feel good. You know, an example of everyday life for that would be you sing a song, you dance, um, you know, people who are in rave concerts, they, they, they're really, they feel great after about an hour or two because you get into that groove of, um, of um, dopamine. And um, so it's, it feels good. It, it's a feel good hormone. It's a reward hormone and uh, or neurotransmitter. So that's that's the shortcut. What you so what can you do? You can you can elicit your own dopamine in different ways. Um, again, uh, shortcutting into that. And um, uh, with regards to Think, uh, which is my system and my company, I have I have four companies, and uh, we're doing um, we're launching an app now as well based mm. on um, it's called Center, and mm. um, very soon it'll be out uh, to hack your dopamine and keep focused um, through cool. breathing and through. Um, Alice, breathing sorry yeah kriya breath uh, love breath mm. and mm. um and stimulating the dopaminergic receptors in your foveal region of the eye so the reason that we're doing wow. that is because you it's another biohack eye is uh, the organ in the body and the brain in the face that is the most late and most it has biggest amount of neuroreceptors for dopamine d1 d3 d5 mm. And so we tap into specific ones that are quickly eliciting the flow of dopamine. So you put your brain in a state of flow. Cool. Flow <laughs> Can't very, wait. You know? Yeah. It's, it's yeah. Really, uh, very, very easy to do. So hmm. um, the story of Think is that um, it is multifold. I, I started doing neuroscience when I was about 18. I was very interested in... in um, anything brain, you know, anything neuroscience. But before that, I was already very interested in spirituality. And I was always, and I was running a theater at that time as well. So I was thinking how to combine the art and science and spirituality. Mm. Mm. And this was at a time that, you know, it was 90s, you know, nobody was talking about that. You know, I was a kid, I was like, you know, dreaming big and thinking, you know, and the biggest response that I was always getting was, Oh, you just forget that. This is this is crazy what you're thinking. <laughs> it's not going to go nowhere anywhere. You know, it's not good for you, not good for just be realistic. Why don't you become a professor at that university? <laughs> it was for a little while, but it was just so not for me. And uh, you know, I had a calling. It, it, it just it calls you to do certain things that will impact millions around the globe, not just you know, those 30 yeah. people in the room. And um, and so when I opened, I went through normal, you know, regular schooling at universities um, between my alma mater at Columbia, I'm uh, sorry, um, La Sapienza in Rome, then I studied the Sorbonne as well, um, and then I came to Mount Sinai, then I went to the second time around through Columbia Presbyterian, and um, all of that gives you basis of knowledge, you know, certain yeah. type of knowledge, uh, which is right. pretty much standard conservative you know uh, neuroscience however neuroscience has never been really conservative because you if you tap into some interesting neuroscientists they've always talked about consciousness they've always talked about frequencies or different ways of approaching your your being that is not just limited to the brain and so i've seeked those people that yeah. knowledge those patterns to study from and uh, <clears throat> at certain point i was working with a lot of adhd children and um, a certain subgroup of these kids have had a surgical intervention in their heart. And when you have that, you can't have stimulants. So the parents were asking me in desperation, <clears throat> what can you do to help my child who can't have Ritalin? I happen to have a child who also was diagnosed with ADHD and has a hard time 
focusing and you know all of us do i mean yeah every single one of us one way or another just like the fever is a is an indicator of your you know maybe fighting you know your leukocytes start to fight um the invaders of of whatever the the misbalance in the terrain in -hmm. your inner terrain of the body or gut Mm -hmm. uh, or gut biome or biome you end up with with these imbalances also um, when when you need to have it's, it's almost like a red flag for us you know when the attention goes right right and uh, so just like it's a red flag for us it's a green flag for us when the attention flows mm-hmm. you know when you have a great time when you when you're engaged with you know great friends and some mm-hmm. wonderful activities um, everything grows it's in the flow and you never want it to stop and you say well time flies <laughs> and when it's boring when it's hard when it's tedious um, the time kind of seems to slow down. I have a theory on that too. I think that we do, um, we, we are capable of shrinking and expanding time. And I personally practice that and teach people how to do that. Um, I think that that's partially what Think does as well. Um, wow. Think is a neuromodulator. And so it, it came to me as a necessity because on one level, the parents wanted the children to, to, to be able to focus. And I promised them that I would do something to find out how to hack into that. Um, when I was very young, like around 18, 19, I was already working in surgery and, and out of surgery in, in Rome and um, <clears throat> working on, on my studies. Um, at that time, dopamine and Parkinson. And um, so it, it, we were performing brain maps. And in order to pre- perform a brain map, you, know, you have to put this cap on, on the person. And I used to run like maybe eight to 10 patients a day. So you can imagine these caps, they're like swim caps and they have about um, 68 electrodes or 64 to 68 electrodes. And you have to put the gel in to make it conduct and um, to make it conduct the brain waves. And in that level, it's electrophysiology, pure electrophysiology. And, but, it, you know, it, it's just very, very difficult to do that. Mm-hmm. And they use still to this day, they use the same brain caps. We're talking 30 years later. It's like, mm-hmm. why would you not make it better? Why would you not <laughs> make it functional? So I promised myself at that time that I would invent a better electrode. And so I did, I have a BCI that works that, um, and again, I, I hire incredibly good engineers and, and uh, uh, astrophysicists, um, quantum mathematicians, quantum physicists, you know, lots of my team members are really neurogeneticists. My team members are mostly people who are knowledgeable in, in um, quantum physics and quantum mechanics and less in pure neuroscience because I think we're going out of bounds. We're, we're really breaking the barriers. Yeah. And when you break the barriers, you can't sit at the same level of knowledge, you know. Mm-hmm. Buckminster Fuller, Fuller said that you can't, or, or Einstein said you can't really understand the problem uh, or solve the problem from the same uh, level of comprehension or level of awareness where you start from. You have to raise the awareness and uh, thinking to the next level so that you can actually tap into the source and get that knowledge down. And so that's what Think does, and that's what I did for for Think. I set. You know, I studied a lot of things and other people's knowledge, but what I did literally sat in meditation for two years in front of a candle, not knowing why I was doing that. I was sitting in silence for two hours every morning from four to six, thinking, what am I doing here? You know, what is this? Wow. But I was just honoring the universe wow. and divine consciousness saying, okay, just do me, you know, just download whatever I need to download and I'll give you my heart, my patience, my sitting here like on the cushion not knowing why am I sitting like it you know you just wonder what is going on and after about two years the idea started coming down and one day I just dumped the entire patent on my computer like wow. about 96 pages came out of me and of course this is accumulation of knowledge and sources right. and reading and everything but it just came out in almost impeccable form it's almost like when you write a novel or when you write a write a yeah. song when you're a composer um, yeah. you know, it'll just come out. You just channeled it. And you know, I have to stop you right there for a second because are you, are you guys hearing two? I mean, I hope that stood out to you guys two hours every day for two years. And what I, what I think I call this microwave syndrome and the fact that like it, we want like instant, like, Oh, I'm going to ask 
for something and it's boom, it's going to appear like right in that exact moment. You know, I, sometimes I feel like people get like that with meditation. It's like, well, I'm going to meditate. I want like a, the freaking heavens to open up and I want to see angels like that first time. Like, and what I have found and what it sounds like to me with you too, is like, you were being helped a lot, probably a lot of things that you channel in that one day through your soul. A lot of those pieces probably came in during those two years. So like you were receiving that you were, you know, being guided. It's just, you know, that willingness. And I say that a lot in meditation too. I'm like, okay, I'm like, I am here is something I say a lot in my meditations. Like I got hands, I got the body I'm here. Like, if you want to use me, use me, I'm willing to help. I would love to help, you know? And that's what I'm hearing from you. It's just that, um, I get to me, that's true faith. It's like knowing a deep knowing a deep, but I mean, not knowing all the way, but also knowing <laughs> that it's coming, you know, and that you're that willingness to serve is just so freaking beautiful, Lana. And like, I being seen this, I was looking at your website on your team on thinks team. And I'm like, holy crap. <laughs> There's our website, just maybe one, uh, <laughs> one fourth of the team. It's like wow. the bigger groups are, are huge. And my, my company, I, I have this um, as a serial entrepreneur, I have this uh, way of approaching business is uh, octopus structure. So I don't have like pyramidal structure in my, in my you know, it's all 5D already. Yeah. So uh. we, we were more like a collective. Yeah. And we respect each other's ideas. And yeah, I spearhead a lot of things and, and it comes in in various forms. A lot of times it's just necessity of the day. You know, like for example, now you were touch, touching upon the, the, <clears throat> the necessity for, for trust. So I was just in my meditation this morning and I was talking to my other colleague um, and we just performed um, beautiful healing recently um, on a friend of mine who is a guitarist. And he is a pretty famous guitarist and um, he, he had, you know, he had fevers and viruses and then needed to get rid of that and need to get rid of pneumonia. So I just gave him some tools, you know, standard tools between ivermectin and other things that he can use and he can know, but also some other elements that one can tap into his own self. Mm -hmm. And he got, you know, out of this, you know, mock of being sick in about three days and his hands, which were affected and his skin, which was affected and allopathic doctor, you know, oncologist told him that he had cancer and I tapped into him and I did not feel like cancer to me. You know, it just did not feel like cancer. Mm. So um, what we did, we, we just um, implied, you know, baths for morgellons and some other things that he could do and he get rid of some toxins, you know, and just some juices and, um, you know, the protocol that, medical medium does or anybody you know who heals usually you can you can have your tisane of uh, thyme or rosemary and then you can have your you know celery juice or you can have your blueberry smoothie that is you know you take in the middle of the day with, with detoxing with chlorella and stuff it'll draw the toxin out of your body yeah. so that's kind of almost almost medical you know <clears throat> yeah but then you tap into spirituality and you grow to the next level where you can actually you know, invite yourself to, you know, yes, listen to the Tibetan bowls or listen to a very happy music, but you, you almost take it as a task to engage in these uh, beautiful frequencies of elevated consciousness. Yeah. And you, you tap into that and you, you merge the, the spirituality with medical knowledge, and then you end up elevating to the next degree. And so it doesn't, doesn't feel tedious. It doesn't feel, it feels like you're in the flow with this um, respectfully to, to this consciousness. And so this morning I was meditating and um, I, I think a lot of us have encountered a lot of blocks in the last three weeks. Something energetically has been going on in the air that has been blocking blocking a lot of you know expansion. It, on one level, you're expanding like crazy. And then on the other level, you're really, feeling, okay, this should be unblocking now and flowing and it's not. Mm -hmm. And so I was asking, what is the lesson that I have to learn? Because I was counting, I was, you know, I'm, I'm a scientist, so I go to P chart, you know, I'm like, <laughs> I like one, two, three, four, five, <laughs> I tend to be spiritual, but I'm, I'm doing my, you know, so, <laughs> the P charts and I'm like, okay, nine things that have now this stagnating energy. That should not be there. Why? What, what is the lesson that I have to learn? So what came in is I needed to trust the process, but not just saying it in the words that, you know, it's superficial and you can just say, fine, I trust the process and this is 
you know, I'll go for it. That's, that's just words. But when you really trust the process, you enter into this state of bliss and, and happiness. And then the proof is in the pudding. You're, you're really, everything flows. You're attuned, literally attuned. So it flows like, like a good song on the stage. You know, there is no margin for error and you don't even think about the error. You just think about yeah. being in your soul and your heart and, you know, riffing and, and just singing at the same time. And it just flows through you and yeah. magical levels. Oh, and that yeah. flow is just what we need to be in the flow all the time. And how does it happen? I think for majority of us, we're probably, you know, without sound, sounding dogmatic, I think it, is, it happens for everybody this way where you enable this, this flow of divinity consciousness, where you trust, where you believe that, that you know, your surrender yeah. is what is the process. So that means that you're in the now, you, you're experiencing yourself as a being. We were all kind of, we're very skilled doers, you know, where we can perform yeah. a lot and then really mm -hmm. we're always on the go. But I think when you let yourself to be, and then you elicit this trust from your heart, which yeah. is that you think with your heart or we, you feel with your brain and the heart and photovoltaic energy, you end up being in a moment, which is what yeah. things brings you for. Mm. You end up being in the flow of trust the universe, trust the gorgeous divinity consciousness with all your heart. So that means that you're not questioning it. And that means also that you release control, which yeah. is very hard for a lot of us. So you just literally let go and let God and let go and let divinity consciousness. Yeah. And that, that takes, takes guts on, on yeah. some levels because we're all, um, you know, we're, I think majority of humans are afraid of letting go, you know, yeah. of letting, trusting this, this surrender. So maybe that's what happened to you in ayahuasca, you know, the third yeah. day, when yeah. you finally trusted the process and you let go yeah. and then everything started flowing. Yeah, I, I I will wrap that up with a I have a friend of mine who you would really like because he channels, which I'd never really believed in channeling until I met him. And I do actually now because I've witnessed some really oh, incredible yeah. things. I was like, he cannot talk like that. I that was like the best personal development speech I've ever heard in my life. Anyway, he's very, very tapped in. And he had this dream once, he told me, and I'll never forget it. Just what you're talking about. He had this dream of there was a river. And he was floating down it. He was floating down this river, just in pure bliss. And he looks over in the dream and he sees all these people and they're on the sides and they're like in roots, exposed roots and thorns. And, and they're like, no, they're like freaking out because they don't want to go let go and surrender and go down the river. And he was like, oh my gosh, I'm like in pure ecstasy and bliss, just floating down this river. And your guys' fear is, is blocking you from this, you know? And I just always get that image in my head of exactly what you're talking about. And anytime, just to, you know, kind of recap what you said there, anytime I'm feeling stressed, anxious, I'm trying to control too many things, all of that. I just drop in and meditate. I mean, like right on my couch, right over there. Like, I'll just be like, go into breath. And I'm just like, can you help me out? <laughs> Can you help me out? What do I need to know? And it's just the instant. proper prayer of invocation of, yeah. you know, thinking it's just in advance. Uh, Greg Braden talks very eloquently about it. Thinking yeah. in advance the universe for yeah. what has been given to you. Cherokee Indians have the dance, the rain dance. They, they prepare by, by thinking in advance for yeah. the rain. So then yeah. you drop in the tanks, thank yes. and it takes like milliseconds. And then you end up being strong in your, you know, uh, joy and relaxation but that's the first step to surrender i think yeah surrendering then this is a facilitation for surrendering so if you ask a biohack of surrender i think it's it's just a phrase of gratitude which you can write on a piece of paper or write um, you know in your memory you just say you know thank you divinity consciousness thank you source for i don't know my um, wow. my smart body you know yeah. or my smart um, exactly you know my, my child yeah and, um, it takes literally, you know, three seconds to say that. Yeah. You say it once, you feel it, you release, right, and then you just flow in that state of flow. And what will happen is that the universe will give you where yeah. you put your attention on. Yes, and uh, yeah, I, I always say it is impossible to feel gratitude and negative emotions at the same time. 
doesn't happen. And it, it is, it's a hack. It's a, I love that you're talking about uh, using emotions as hack, using the emotion of gratitude, using the emotion of love as a hack to change your state, which is like (laughs) as simple as it gets, you know? So anyway, I love, I just, I love what you're on to girl. I'm like, Oh, you're drinking from that cup. You're drinking from that like deep source cup. And I appreciate you being as um, accoladed as you are in this, in the field of science, bringing so much of spirituality and blending those two together, which they are the same thing, you know, and I, I see that you're doing that and it's just amazing. Um, we'll link up everything you talked about in the show notes. What was the name of your app that's coming out again? Centered. Centered. It's not Centered. Centered. But we just had a very big recognition. I just wanted to share with you and your audience. Yeah, please. Uh, it, it just happened yesterday fully. Um, we will be out. Um, we, we got accepted fully. Our paper, I worked on this with my team of more than like 400 scientists. We we definitely got accepted at Nature. Um, yes. Research. It took us long, long, long years. Finally. So Huge. I can actually pu- publish the paper and show it out. I'm writing a book. I'm writing a book called Younging and also another one called Dopa Hacks. Um, on my Instagram, which is Dr. Vanna Morrow um, and also Think Interfaces, there are a lot of Dopa Hacks um, for free. You know, people can just cool. go to the, um, the links and uh, go into that and see what that is about. There are some interviews of mine around, you know, that people can actually get some knowledge on and references to. Yeah, and um, I think that there, there are so many wonderful things that one can do. And we're available to, to you know, either consult or train people with the thing. And it's, it's non-invasive training. It's very easy and simple. And you can just do it in about um, five hours cumulatively, five sessions of one, 45 minutes or, or 50 minutes. And you're done. And you reroute your brain. You bring your own, you know, neuroplasticity in action, sometimes even neurogenesis. And so wow. Oh, amazing. Oh, amazing. Um, I will, I'll link that up chat and get to, yeah. you get to jam with you here. Yeah. Right. Thank you so much for taking the time and sharing with us and guys. Yeah. Check her out. Dr. Alana Morrow on Instagram and I'll link think interfaces website and all, and, um, hopefully like maybe by the time this comes out, your app will be released. We'll see, but I'm, I'll make sure to share it. If you share it with me, I'll share it on, on social oh, media. Definitely. So make yeah. sure you follow me there too. So thank you so much, so much. Yeah. <laughs> Appreciate your time. It's an honor to be with you. Thank you.